How's it going everyone? Today I'm hanging out with one of my great friends here in Los Angeles, John Westcott. He is my guitar tech. He's been the only guitar tech I've ever had, literally, in LA. The only man I trust to touch really? my guitars. Literally, I'm not even kidding. Wow. Like, I forget how I even got connected with you, honestly. Yeah, just, we, we know a lot of the same people. Yeah. You know, I was very, very particular about how my guitars are set up, and John has always been the guy. I haven't gone to anyone else in 10 years, so. Wait, thanks. Um, so today I figured, you know, I just got this guitar. It's the Bruno Mars Strat. It's right out of the box. Uh, hasn't been set up. It plays okay, but there's some things wrong with it. I don't know anything about setting up guitars. I've always been kind of afraid of setting up guitars and... A lot of people are. You know, afraid of touching something and it's going to break. So I figured I'm going to ask John to kind of talk me through just, you know, some basic points, some tips, um, you know, not necessarily maintenance, but kind of you know, if you're buying your first guitar or you're buying a guitar in general and you're at the store, things to look out for, things that you could maybe adjust and fix at home. When I when I give you this guitar right now, what's like the first thing you look at? Well, one of the things that I usually ask people is, is this a brand new guitar? Is this something that you just got? Yeah. And I, I see a lot of new guitars. Um, my customers, I've educated them enough over the years that they know that a brand new guitar right out of the box is usually unplayable in my, <laughs> my opinion. They might say that they did a hundred point inspection and their factory yeah. trained luthiers right. have made 50 adjustments on it. That's bullshit. Can I say bullshit? <laughs> you could say that. It's bullshit. <laughs> they did not. Maybe they adjusted the bridge. Right. Usually when I find a guitar, usually the bridge adjustment is kind of okay. The intonation is usually kind of okay. Everything else they did not touch and um, it's generally in need of a full and complete setup. Yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking, you know, the past couple of guitars I've brought you brand new out of the box. I've literally, you were laughing when I brought them in and we were like, this is a disaster. Yeah, yeah it, they were, but you know, that's not that unusual. Yeah, which is funny because, you know, a lot of, especially like beginner players, if it's your first time, you think, oh, if I buy a new guitar, it's gonna be the best. It's like, Absolutely. you buy a new car, it's gonna be way better sure. than- Sure, across the board, Every manufacturer, and I'm going to give a shout out to the one manufacturer in the world, the Tom Anderson guitars, and, and I'm not related to Tom Anderson at all, <laughs> um, out of the box, usually pretty good. Every other manufacturer, I don't care who they are, what they say, custom shop, limited edition, $10,000, whatever, yeah. unplayable out of the box. And this guitar is no exception. And often I find that they are unplayable in very similar ways. Hmm. Although they are not set up, they are all not set up in the same ways. Right. Now, the first thing that I would do, as I would ask Nicholas, is this the gauge of strings that you typically use? Yeah, I think there's tens. And, and it seems to be tuned, tuned to a standard pitch. That's yeah. normally how you do that's it. That's how I do it. Because that's very important. We have to set up the guitar in the manner in which it's going to be used. Interesting. The, the, the pitch that the guitar is tuned to and the string gauge uh, we'll put a different amount of tension on the neck, which will uh, affect how the neck is set up, which will affect hmm. the action, which will affect the intonation. Everything is kind of related. Right. So the first thing I'm going to do on this guitar, or any guitar that I would look at, is to check the relief in the neck. After I'm, I have confirmed that the string gauge and the tuning is correct, I will uh, check the relief in the neck. What's neck relief? Uh, <laughs> I oh. genuinely don't, I don't know. I don't know. A, a guitar neck should not be perfectly straight. Okay. It should have a slight amount of bow in the neck. Right. A lot of people will refer to it as relief. So okay. that's why I'm using that vernacular, yeah. but I refer to it as bow in the neck. Interesting. Um, so how I check it, you might see people kind of looking at it like that, and that's kind of okay, but I was taught to use the string as a straight edge. So what I do is I fret here at the first fret, with my left hand, mm -hmm. with the thumb of my right hand, I fret it where it joins the body, not at the very end of the neck, but where it joins the body. And then with my uh, index finger here, I check to see if there is a gap beneath the bottom of the fret, between the bottom of the neck, mm -hmm. and the top of the fret, here in the center, like around the seventh fret. And this neck is perfectly straight. Oh. And I want a little bit of relief, as I said. So if it's perfectly straight, what does that feel like, I guess? Like, if it's if it's bowed, you'll have a lot of travel down to hit the fretboard? And if it's, well, if it's straight... we're not really to that point yet. Okay. Because, because, because the action 
sort of in this area is kind of correct, but it's correct in the wrong way. Right. So, so we're not really looking at the overall feel of the guitar yet. We're, we're kind of uh, uh, going step by step through the elements right. of the setup. Okay, so you did neck relief first. Right. Okay. So, so uh, I did not see that gap when I checked here between uh, the bottom of the string and the top of the fret around the seventh fret when I am using the string as a straight edge. Mm -hmm. Um, but I want there to be a little bit of relief. Probably about the thickness of a very thin business card. If you could, when, when you uh, fret with both hands, if you think you could slip a business card just barely between the bottom of the string and uh, the top of the fret, around that seventh fret area, then you're kind of in the ballpark of where you need to, to, to be as far as the relief in the neck. Now, the, the relief in the neck kind of needs to be proportional to the action, so the lower you want the action, the straighter you want the neck, the higher the action, maybe a little more relief, but you never want it perfectly straight. Right, and the action is just how high the strings are off the fretboard. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay. And of course, we adjust the truss rod by adjusting the, the, the truss rod where it's, it's found either here, mm -hmm. as it is on this guitar, at the body, or at the headstock. Right, I feel like they're usually there. I actually didn't notice that until right now. It's yeah, the usually, usually they're, they're there. Most Fender guitars traditionally have them there. Huh. Or, or you know what, maybe maybe not. It's probably 50-50 with Fender. It's sort of the traditional Fender guitars yeah. and the reissues and vintage guitars will have them down here. Uh, starting in the early 70s, they started putting them up here. Now they're kind of both ways. I've even seen guitars that have uh, a truss rod adjustment here on the side. Oh, weird. <laughs> and some that have them in the back. But those are very unusual. You're yeah. not gonna run into too many of those. So after I have the truss rod adjusted, now now this one is, is too straight, so I need to loosen the truss rod by turning the truss rod nut counterclockwise. Okay. That loosens the truss rod and allows the tension of the neck to pull it up and give it a little bit of bow. So once I get that dialed in, then, I will check the action at the nut. I cannot emphasize enough how important this is. It is the single most important thing that I do on most guitars that I set up. And the single most overlooked things by guitar manufacturers and other repairmen. It's so important. And I know a lot of you out there are beginners, Nicholas told me. Although, although you're coming along nicely. I'm a Keep beginner. Practicing. I'm a beginner. <laughs> And so you're going to be playing a lot here in, your, in the, what they call the cowboy chord area in the first few frets. Mm. Um, and so the, consider that the nut is essentially an open fret. And the height of the nut should correspond directly to the height of the frets, just like it was another, uh, another fret. Right. And I can see, looking at it from here, that the nut is way yeah. high on this guitar, yeah. which is typical. Now what I'm going to do, now you're going to get a close-up of this, later, yeah, yeah. right? Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm playing this first fret and kind of getting an idea of that height of the bottom of the string right. to the top of the fret. And then I'm going to fret that down and do the same thing at the second fret. And I'm going to compare the two. Mm. And you can see that that is way higher, way higher yeah. than that. Yeah. Now, not only is that going to make it more difficult for you to play down here because the action is going to be way higher than it needs to be, but it's going to also sharpen your intonation because you have to stretch the string more than is necessary to get the, the string down to the fret. And whenever you stretch a string, what happens? Goes out of tune. Goes sharp. Absolutely. So you'll find the guitar much easier to play and much more in tune in this area if the nut heist is correct. Interesting, because I actually had used um, a similar guitar on a Fender demo, mm -hmm. and I was playing some open chords, and like one, I think it was like the G or the D string kept going out of tune, Right. but it was perfectly in tune, but when I would go to play like a C chord or something, and I'd fret the note, it right. would be a little sharp every single time, and right. I was like, I don't know if it's me playing poorly, or if it's the, the nut, so I didn't even know that that would have been the nut. With anyone else, that I would say the nut for sure. With you, maybe you were playing for Yeah, me. I was probably just messing up. <laughs> <laughs> now, in, in order to bring the nut to the, to the uh, proper height, I'll use these two tools. 
Um, this is, uh, and, and I use a, a different tool for each of the, the slots that I'm going to deepen. Interesting. This is the only like guitar specific tool someone would need, a nut file. And you can, you can get these online or from some of the, the manufacturers. And you need to get files of different gauges for the different gauge strings. Interesting. And this is a small saw. I have a few of these of different gauges that are made by Exacto, and you can get those at art supply places or hardware stores or, or whatever. The rest of the tools I use are just stuff you can get at the hardware store, screwdrivers and Allen wrenches and drills and things like that. Um, I, I, always, I always thought for some reason, like, I needed all these, like, specialized tools to do a guitar setup. Yes, which is part are... of the reason I've always been deterred from trying to do it right. myself. I know? think you'll find a lot of guitar repair videos are made exclusively to sell you shit you don't need. Right. Um, so, so we don't need any special tools that you can't get at a hardware store other than this, this small file. Amazing. So I will deepen each slot. Mm -hmm of each string until we get that action at the first fret just the same as the action at the second fret when the first fret is fretted behind it. Interesting. You understand? Yeah. You wow. do understand. I'm actually learning today. <laughs> this oh, okay. is crazy. Now, so far, we can assume that we have the relief in the neck set. Mm -hmm. We have the nut height correct. On brand new guitars, I have found that a lot of times they're just not tightly put together that these nuts are loose on the tuners, mm -hmm. that the neck screws are, are loose. Right. Um, so we want to take care of all that. So usually I just go through that. I've already Diagonally. done that on this guitar. Yeah. And and these were kind of loose. The neck screws were, were pretty tight, but often they're kind of loose. So we want to take There is some wiggle out. room. Yeah. yeah. Now we can measure the action and find out where the action is. It's very important as I'm discussing this that these things are done in sequence. Okay. Um, you don't want to measure the action and say, well, the action's low before you have adjusted the neck, before you have adjusted the nut. Very important we do this Interesting. in the sequence. I would have thought, oh, I want to check the action, let me measure it first and right. then go backwards. So that's yeah. so, so, uh, so now we're going to measure the action. A lot of literature available on adjusting guitars, videos and such, will tell you to measure the action at the 12th fret. And that's fine, whatever works for you. I was taught to measure the action in the area where it, it joins the body. So that, that's what I'm going to be measuring the action, like around the 14th to 15th fret. Interesting. Um, and how I measure the action is uh, you should get one of these. You can get it at a hardware store for five bucks. Uh, a, little, a little metal ruler that has gradations of, I think, 30 seconds and 60 fourths of an inch. Wow. And we are measuring the action from the bottom of the string to the top of the fret, not to the fingerboard to the top of the fret. Interesting. Because frets are of varying heights, but you're not playing the fingerboard, you're right. playing the frets. So I measure from the bottom of the string to the uh, top of the fret, and it's 2 30 seconds of an inch, which is a little bit low. I want to bring that up to maybe about 2 and a half 30 seconds. And then I will measure the next string Will that be the same measurement for all six strings? No. Okay. I typically like to set up the uh, the higher pitch strings about a 64th of an inch lower than the wound strings, or the, the lower. Yeah. And, and, and I kind of blend them together. Interesting. If, if I'm going to do, uh, let's say, two and a half, 30 seconds mm -hmm. on the low E string and two 30 seconds on the high E string, which is a very common setup that I do, I will do the E and the A string at two and a half 30 seconds, the D and the G string at two and a quarter 30 seconds, mm -hmm. and then the B and the E string at uh, two 30 seconds. So we have a nice, uh, even progression. Uh, yeah, blend of, yeah. The, of the strings together. Now, I, I set up my guitars uh, for, uh, even though Nicholas has been coming for almost 10 years, yeah. I consider him one of my new clients because I have dozens and dozens, scores of clients that I've been working for. for uh, 30 years or even 40 years. My, my longest running customer, uh, a guy named Keith Wyatt, great guitar player, shout out to Keith Wyatt, has been coming to me for 43 years. Wow. Um, and uh, so, so I set them up to their taste and, right. and I might set up a guitar with the action I just described and some people want it lower. And fine, you can have it lower. I even remember the first, the first time I brought you my guitar and you had no idea, we didn't know each other or anything. You were like, can you play a little bit for me? Like, tell me what you like. It was, it was almost like a, 
like a physical at the doctor. You like really wanted to know everything that was going on with me personally in relationship to the instrument. So like you set it up how you saw me playing it. Right. As there, opposed there are... to, you know, a lot of techs I've gone to in the past, like when I used to live in Boston, they'd just be like, oh, do you want like high or low action? Right. And I'd be like, well, I like to do this thing. And they're like, high or low. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was really, it was just really nice that you understand that every player is different and you can actually tailor the setup to a guitar to make it feel more natural. For there, there, there are certain things that have to be. Like, for instance, I, I, I emphasize the, the nut height. That really should be set a specific way. Yeah. Sometimes I might do something like set it up a tiny bit higher for someone who likes to play a lot of slide and they don't want to clunk against the frets. Right. But typically that has to be a certain way. Yeah. But as far as the action being a certain way, that's to taste. There's really no right way or wrong way. As long as the customer is happy with it, <laughs> then it's the right way. But I would say probably 75% of the setups that I do are with the action as I described, from two and a half, 30 seconds here to about two, 30 seconds here, which with the amount of bow that I, I described. So we'll set up the action and on a, a, a Fender style guitar like this or any guitar that has um, six saddles, we have to adjust each saddle uh, individually to get that nice even action. Right. You might have a, a guitar like a, a Les Paul that has, a, a, let's say, like a tunematic style bridge mm -hmm. where it can just go up and down. It's still important on those to measure each string because sometimes you will find a string that's too high or too low. And you can correct that by using the same tools that you would correct uh, to uh, file down the nut slots. You can use the same tool to file down the bridge slots uh, of the high strings to get them nice and even across the fingerboard. And that's really important. Having a guitar with, with low comfortable action is, is important, but it's also important to have the action nice and even and symmetrical. That's what makes a guitar play, play comfortably. Not necessarily just the lowest action you can get. Sometimes right. having a guitar with action that's too low can make it difficult to play. Yeah. It makes it difficult to bend strings and do vibratos. Um, and you have to kind of fight the fingerboard a little bit. Um, and uh, so, so now we've got the bow and the neck uh, adjusted. Mm -hmm. We have the nut height adjusted. We have discussed adjusting uh, the action at the bridge. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing we are going to do is adjust the tremolo on the bridge. Now I should back up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I already noticed on this guitar that the tremolo is set up against the body. You probably can't see that, but but the tremolo is not floating on this guitar. It does it does not uh, raise the pitch of the strings. Right. If the tremolo was up in the air and was floating prior to me working on the guitar, I will have discussed with the customer if that's something that he wants to keep or something that he wants to uh, get yes. rid of. Have it set it up so that the tremolo can be used to, uh, to go lower the down. pitch of the strings as opposed to lower the strings and raise the pitch of the strings. Now, a lot of people need to have a floating tremolo because their music dictates that they need that. Jeff right. Beck and, and Scott Henderson and other people like that use, use that to uh, great effect. Yeah. Um, but if you don't need it, there are certain downsides to that. For instance, if you are playing the guitar and you bend the string uh, on a floating tremolo, the, the tremolo, because of the increased tension of that one string, when you bend it, will pull, pull forward and the other strings will go flat. That's um, a, that I always keep my tremolo like that, right? Because of that, I remember like right. I used to. I always do like the open low E string and then like a twelfth fret bend right. to do the octaves. And I remember the first time we discovered like the floating bridge and I did that bend and my low E string went like, oh, like down <laughs> exactly. to like an E flat or a D. And I was like, oh, God. And if, and if you're, on, you're on stage playing in front of uh, a million people, as you do, um, uh, and you break a string, you're... Oh, you're totally... Yes, toasted. you cannot fake your way to the... To the <laughs> There, there is a great uh, video online of, oh, God, I think it's Danny Kerwin in, in uh, Fleetwood Mac yeah. years ago, and he breaks a string in the middle of a solo, and he just burns right through it. He's <laughs> playing a Les Paul. It did not really affect the guitar. Yeah. Um, and also, I think you lose a little bit of tone if, you're, if your uh, tremolo yeah. is floating because the tremolo flutters just a little bit. Um, but in any event, so, so we are, I, I knew beforehand we were going to set this up not to be floating. But we want it to be nice and comfortable as possible. But we don't want it to 
this one's pretty good. So I don't think we need to adjust it because it feels nice and loose, mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't move if we bend the string. But if it did say it did need to be adjusted, do we right. adjust that on the front or the back? Or... We adjust it in the back using, in most cases, the spring claw. Now you see this one is, is tightened all the way against the body. Usually they are not like that. We, we can loosen the spring claw like we're doing now to lessen the tension because it allows the, the springs to compress a little bit. Or we go the other way and it stretches the springs and, and uh, exerts tire. more tension. A lot of people think, think in terms of how many springs should it have. I, I you know, know, I was just gonna ask. I've seen you know guitars that have like five or six. I don't know if they can have six, but I've definitely seen with more springs. Is there like a right benefit or a downside? There were people that will will argue with just about anything that yeah, I say yeah. in this video, but no, it doesn't matter. It's the amount of tension. If you have three springs that have forty pounds of pressure, as opposed to four springs that each have thirty pounds of pressure. You have the same amount of tension. You have the same amount of pressure. That's all you need is to get the correct amount of tension to counter the tension of the strings in the front. You How know someone's gonna say the tone is in the spring. There, I, I was shocked to find <laughs> that there is a company that sells replacement oh, springs goodness. or tremolos because I don't know. Yeah, you know, <laughs> whatever know. you can sell. <laughs> yes, yes, believe me. That's why I don't sell anything, because most of that shit you don't need. Yeah. Um, if the Beatles didn't need it, it and, and Jimi Hendrix didn't need it, yeah. you don't need it. Um, so I will adjust the springs. If, if I need to make a great adjustment mm -hmm. in the tremolo, I might remove a spring or add a spring, of course. Right. But usually that, that adjustment can be made simply by tightening or loosening the spring claw in the back of the guitar. So, so to, to recap, we yeah. have adjusted the bow in the neck, we've mm -hmm. adjusted the nut, we've adjusted the action, we've adjusted the tremolo. But to back up a little bit, if we had to adjust from a non-floating to floating or vice versa, we would do that before we adjusted the, the action. Awesome. Okay. At the guitar, the action set now where it should be. It should be playing the way you want it to play after we've done all these things, but we're not done with the setup. We still mm -hmm. need to set the intonation. Right. Now, uh, you would think, well, go ahead and adjust the bridge saddles, but there's actually something that we have to do before that, and that's adjust the height of the pickups. And yes. the reason we have to do that is because that can actually affect the intonation. Just as we talked about the nut affecting the intonation here, mm -hmm. people think about the intonation as just bridge saddle adjustment. That's how I've always thought it. <laughs> but there's more to that. Yeah. The, the, the nut, the, as we're going to discuss, the, the pickup height, the condition of the frets, all those things can, adjust, right. can affect the intonation. So in adjusting the, the, the pickup height, I generally set them up at their highest maximum uh, level, high, uh, closest to the strings as is safe without them interfering with anything. Mm -hmm. That's particularly important on a Stratocaster that has three pickups. Um, they can, they can uh, cause a lot of problems if they're too close to the strings, um, particularly that neck pickup. So what I like to do is I like to fret the string at the very last fret and then get my little tool here, my, mm -hmm. my ruler, and measure from the top of the pole piece to the bottom of the strings when I have this last fret uh, threaded. And we want to get the strings no closer than 3 30 seconds of an inch. Maybe the bridge pickup you can get a little closer, let's say 2 30 seconds of an inch, um, because the, the further you get away from the bridge, the easier it is for the magnets in the pickups, which are very strong, to grab a hold of that string and keep it from vibrating freely which can affect yeah. the intonation, give you these weird overtones, it can yeah. cause fret buzz as it pulls the string towards so the weird. fingerboard. And you would never think of that, but that can actually be a big issue. I do a lot of work for a lot of collectors yeah. um, who have vintage guitars and old Stratocasters from the, the 60s. The pick guard always cracks here and kind of goes up like that. Right. And the screws that they used back then were very short. And so you can't adjust the pickup without it going 
clunk then so we often have to like replace the screw right. there just to get those guitars playable because that one pickup is always too close to the strings. Oh my God. So we've got the bow and neck, we've got the we've got the nut, we got the tremolo, we got the action, we got the pickup heights adjusted. Now we set the intonation with the bridge saddles. And that's that's very simple. Absolutely foolproof, idiot proof. Anybody should be able to do this. Yeah. Even you should be able I'm to do I'm afraid to do it, but I know I can Yes, do it. I know. You're, you're afraid of everything, Nicholas. You'll be fine. Um, but what we do is we play the open string or the harmonic at the 12th fret and compare that to the fretted note at the 12th fret. You don't compare the open string to the harmonic because they're always going to be the same. You compare the open string or the 12th fret harmonic, which is what I prefer to use, against the fretted note. Now, if the fretted note is sharper than the harmonic, we need to flatten it. And you flatten the tone on a string instrument by increasing the length of the string. Just, just as we're, just as the note is getting flatter and flatter because the length of the string is being increased. So we increase the length of string between the 12th fret and the bridge saddle by tightening this screw back here and moving the saddle back. That's increasing the distance of the string, which will flatten the tone. And you do that until the fretted note at the 12th fret is exactly the same as the harmonic at the 12th fret. Do you use like a specific tuner? I feel like I've seen people be like, you have to use this tuner to intonate a no, guitar. Or no, you, just, you, you, can use, you can use anything. You can, you can use uh, an app on your phone. You can use a, a, you know, a clip-on tuner. You can, use, awesome. you can use whatever. And I, I actually use a tuner only to kind of confirm what I hear. Amazing. I can hear when the note is out of tune. I yeah. can't always tell if it's sharp or flat, though. That's, yeah. where, that's where the tuner <laughs> is helpful. But I can tell when it's out of tune. So the guitar is all completely set up now. It, 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 uh, all the adjustments are made, and it's, it's ready to go. But also, when I get a, a new guitar, I also just kind of look it over a little bit. And one thing we have to be concerned with is the frets. Right. These Fender guitars like this are usually pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, there is very little instances of fret unevenness. Mm -hmm. You do see that on, on a lot of the less expensive guitars from China and Indonesia, but but it's not completely unheard of to find them on a more expensive, uh, otherwise well-made guitar. Yeah. Um, if you if you have a fret buzz that's isolated on a specific fret, as opposed to an area of the neck, um, that's a good indication that you might have a high fret or a low fret. But there was another thing that I noticed when you brought this guitar and I, and I first held it, and, and that is the edges of the frets are very uncomfortable. They're protruding yes. quite a bit from the edge of the fingerboard. Um, they, the, there is a term, fret sprout, um, which, is when, which is when a neck shrinks. But the frets, frets which are metal, do not, do not shrink there. and they kind of stick out the edge of the fingerboard. That's not technically what's happening here. I just think they manufactured these these uh, necks with frets that kind of are sticking out of the edge. Large and in charge, yeah. And they're big, so you can really feel them. Yeah. So I know that you don't like that. Yeah. Other people might not feel that because mm -hmm. of the way they play their hand position on the neck. But um, it's something that's easily corrected by someone like me who knows what they're doing and isn't afraid to uh, yeah. chop on a guitar with, with power tools. <laughs> Um, so, so we, we can fix that up. Um, but if, if you find a guitar that has com uncomfortable fret edges or maybe a buzzy fret here or there, it's not a deal breaker. It might, uh, require a little bit more work, but it's, it's not a big deal. Amazing. A any questions? Yeah. I mean, shit, I learned so much, honestly. <laughs> well, good. That's, These that's are all point. things that I, I always thought were, you had to have like some crazy... It's something you need to go to school for. Yeah, exactly. But you just went to school. Uh, well, that, that's you know, it. There I am. <laughs> now, th of course, there's always exceptions to everything because right. there, I, every, every once in a while someone will bring a guitar in and it's like, what is this? I've never <laughs> seen this before in my yeah. life. But the, the same principles pretty much apply to yeah. most, most, not even guitars, stringed instruments. Right, right. Um, and, and so hopefully now uh, the viewers out there in YouTube land... The, when they go maybe shopping for a guitar, 
even if they don't want to do their own setup on their guitar, they don't want to go out and buy some, some tools or whatever, um, they can at least understand what's going on with the guitar and, yeah. and see past the way the guitar might play initially when they take it out of a box or take it off the wall. Right. Um, and you could have a really amazing guitar and out of the box it might be like unplayable and right. horrible. So you might be like, oh, I picked this up at the guitar store, I'm never going to play it, it sounds awful, it feels terrible. When really it could have been like your soulmate guitar. I mean, right. It just, it just needed a setup. And I have people bring me guitars all the time that say, well, it's a cheap guitar, so I know it's not going to play very well. And it's like, no, I can make a cheap guitar play yeah. as good as something like this. It might need a little bit more work to get there. Right. Um, but any guitar, most guitars, I won't say any guitar, some guitars have fa fatal flaws, <laughs> fatal defects. But most guitars can be made to play um, as well as any other guitar. So if anyone's in Los Angeles and wants to get their guitar set up by you, how do they get in touch with you? How do they contact you? Um, well, you're probably going to put a, a, a link at the bottom of this. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, you better. You said uh, you would. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, or you can find me um, on Instagram. I'm Westcott Guitar. Um, you can find, uh, I have a, a website, uh, I don't even know, I think it's westcottguitar.com, I haven't looked at it in a we'll long pull, time. We'll pull all the links. You can find me on Yelp or on the internet, you know how to use the internet, you'll figure it out. Yeah. But but happy to ha help anybody, even if you just have a question, feel free to call me, I'm always happy to, to share my, my limited brain power with Amazing. anybody who is uh, in a predicament. I love it. Thanks so much and thanks always for freaking killing my guitars and making them feel amazing. Great, great to it. see you again. Absolutely. Thank you so much.